Welcome to this series of videos on systems engineering where we're going to go through this design and testing of an Arduino based system. This series of videos will take you through the entire process of context analysis all the way to system validation. This first video is going to be on writing the CONOPS paper. So first let's review the V system model of engineering. We always start with the understanding of the big picture of the system or the context. It's also called the enterprise description because it describes the setting for the events we're looking at, much like the setting of a play. It describes what's happening in the current process, how we can measure the current process, and even the physics behind the current process. It also describes the stakeholders and their relationships with each other. From here, we'll write our problem and need statement. Once we know our problem, we can write the concept of operations or the CONOPS paper, which outlines the solution we'll propose. In the CONOPS, we describe the features the system has and how the user will use it. After the client accepts the concept paper, we'll write the requirements document paper, which describes in a clear and testable manner the criteria the system must have. The requirements document should also include a test plan to verify to the client that we have met the requirements. Once the client has accepted our requirements document and test plan, we begin the physical design of the system, then we build our prototype. After we build the prototype, we'll go through the testing phases to verify that we built it right, meaning according to our requirements, and then we validate with the customer to ensure that we built the right thing. The customer is actually happy with our system. Okay, so let's create a context. The enterprise description will be the um, emergency personnel and first responders who respond to a remote accident scene. The process we're looking at is emergency personnel carrying equipment and supplies to the accident scene with ill-fitting backpacks that bounces around on their backs as they're running. Okay, so what metrics are we going to apply to measure this process? So one metric will be after the responder arrives at the accident scene, measure the time it takes for the responders to put on their equipment and get to the injured victim. The second metric will be to determine the amount of back or other injuries reported from responders from wearing the ill-fitting backpacks each month. Okay, these metrics will allow us to create a gap statement relating to the differences between where we are now and where we would like to be in the future. What are the physics behind the ill-fitting backpacks that create problems of getting to an accident scene as well as emergency personnel getting back and other injuries? An ill-fitting backpack is always out of phase with the rhythm of a person's body as they're running or turning. This out of phase force creates additional forces on the back. This out of phase also works against their running force and slows them down. And also, as the person tries to go left or right, the backpacks being out of phase and still tries to go the other way, which may cause the responder to lose their balance, uh, stumble on a rock, spraining their ankles or elbows or hands as they try to cushion their fall. And it's not just the instantaneous effect of these muscle strains, but it's the cumulative effect of months and years of running with ill-fitting equipment that is also contributing to these back and other injuries. So, the ill-fitting equipment is increasing the time it takes to get to the accident scene and increasing the amount of personal injuries for the responders. Okay, now let's take a look at the other stakeholders in our scenario and see how they're affected. We have the primary stakeholders, such as, again, the responder, the first responder themselves. The, then we also have the other responders that are in the call. Then we have the injured person themselves. And we ha also have the dispatch personnel, 
all of these people are immediately impacted by the responders possibly being injured. We also have the secondary stakeholders, such as the supervisors, um, the trainers and the training department, the firefighting county uh, agency, uh, as well as uh, the county's insurance. Finally, we have the tertiary stakeholders, such as the makers of the backpacks. They have to examine, is our equipment actually designed to uh, be run with? Uh, is there something in our design that's you know, causing this problem as well? Okay, so now we can get to our problem statement. The first responder is not aware of the back and shoulder injuries they are receiving due to the instantaneous and cumulative effects of wearing ill-fitting backpacks. So now for our need statement, we just kind of reverse or put a positive turn to the need uh, problem statement. So we would say, first responders need to know when the backpacks are causing an excessive amount of force that would lead to near-term and long-term back injuries. Okay, so now we can start on our CONOPS paper. We can describe a low-cost, wearable device that can measure the backpack's force and give real-time warnings when those forces exceed some threshold. We can explain what features the system has and how the user operates the device to fix the problem. We can use an activity diagram that illustrates how the system is used. We also need to address any stakeholders' anxieties in our CONOPS to ensure all stakeholders buy-in. Because if we don't get all the stakeholders buy-in, we'll have a rough time getting the system accepted. So in our CONOPS paper, I see two use cases. The first one is training. The user puts their equipment on, turns their device on, goes through some training exercise, then the user takes uh, the, um, then the trainer takes the data and the trainer and the user go through the data and look at see how they could possibly improve their uh, training procedures or their procedures to reduce the amount of those um, out of phase forces and measure and they could even have criteria then to measure the time it takes to get to the uh, to get to an accident scene and they could measure the forces that are generated on the ba responders backpack another uh, use case would be the emergency site itself the responders adrenaline is rushing as they're running to the scene with their backpacks on the system can issue alarms to remind the responder to first off make sure the equipment is on properly and the proper way to run or move to an accident scene. Notice in our CONOPS, we're documenting the change to the current procedure. We're showing how our system, when used properly, can improve the metrics we stated in our context analysis. We show how we're going to close the gap we had mentioned before and improve those metrics. Also, notice that in the CONOPS, we're giving an overview of the features of the system. We're not going into any details on how it does it. Notice I said that it'll measure force and give an alarm, but I didn't mention what that threshold would be when the alarm is, nor what type of alarm the user would get. I also said that it would record data but I didn't mention how long the system would record data or even exactly what data it's measuring. I've certainly not said anything about the hardware on the equipment, even though we're saying that this is going to be an Arduino-based system. In my CONOPS paper, I don't mention anything about hardware. All these details will be given in the requirements document. Okay, so I hope that these ideas will help you when you're writing your CONOPS paper. Okay, good luck. Bye.